Last year I made a video just like this giving you guys 5 teams that I thought had a chance to be breakout teams in the 2018 NFL season. Here's a list of what I picked. I picked the Chicago Bears coming off 5-11, the Texans coming off 4-12, the Niners coming off 6-10, Titans coming off 9-7, and, and the Browns had 0-16. Really couldn't go down so that was an easy one. Basically what happened was I had 3 good picks, 1 not so good pick, and 1 pick that stayed the same. Unfortunately for the Niners, Jimmy Garoppolo was out for the season after week 3, and for the Titans, they really didn't make too many improvements, but they were already a 9-7 team. I just expected them to make a big jump because of the new coaching staff and Matt LaFleur working with Marcus Mariota. This video was a pretty fun idea last year, so I decided to do the same thing this year, except it's four teams and new teams, but there actually might be a repeat in there, so I don't want to spoil too much, so let's get into this video. Let's start with the New York Jets, who obviously made some big moves in free agency and had a pretty high pick in the draft, and they picked a very good player at that position as well. Um, first of all, we have Le'Veon Bell, who in 2017 nearly had 1,300 rushing yards, 85 receptions, 655 receiving yards, and 11 total touchdowns. It brings help to a position the Jets really needed help at with the departure of Isaiah Crowell and guys like Bilal Powell and um, Trenton Cannon not really being too effective for the Jets last year, now bringing one of the best running backs in the game. He did miss all of last year, obviously, but if Le'Veon Bell returns to his old self, he's still in his prime, he should be a very good option for the Jets in 2019. The Jets obviously had the third overall pick this year and went with the Alabama defensive tackle, Quentin Williams. Quentin Williams is ranked as the number one player on a lot of uh, people's boards in this draft. Um, many analysts and many big boards had him as their number one player. And gets to play alongside a player in Leonard Williams, so he should be very effective for the Jets. And seems like a can't miss prospect for a lot of people. In round three, the Jets went with an edge rusher in Ja'Kai Polite. The Jets needed upgrades at that position, and Polite totaled 11 sacks and 6 forced fumbles last season for Florida in 2018. CJ Mosley went on to sign a big contract with the Jets. He's had at least 92 combined tackles in each of the last five seasons in the NFL. A very solid player. Some may say overpaid, but should help the Jets nonetheless. For the uh, receiving group, Jamison Crowder, who's still only 26 years old, by the way, that kind of surprised me. Very productive slot receiver. When he stays on the field, at least, he's a sure-handed guy. He just needs to stay healthy and should be productive for the Jets. The Jets traded for guard Kaliche Osemele, who was a first-team All-Pro in 2016, a 2017 Pro Bowl pick, claims he's lost weight and should be in the best shape of his life. The Jets also signed Brian Poole, who was a decent corner for the Falcons the previous three seasons and had a PFF grade of 61.7 in 2018. The Jets also re-signed Henry Anderson, who had somewhat of a breakout year for the Jets with seven sacks in 2018, earned himself a $25 million extension, and was given a 76.5 by PFF last season. The Jets obviously have a new coach in Adam Gase who went 23-25 with a mediocre at best roster in Miami, including a playoff appearance in 2017 which ended an 8 year drought for the Dolphins organization. He was also given Jay Cutler and Ryan Tannehill and Matt Moore to play the position he is known for developing and is now given a 22 year old potential star in Sam Darnold to work with. Gates worked with Peyton Manning for 3 seasons in Denver and recommended Gates for the job with the Jets. Sam Darnold is someone I expect better from in year two. He averaged 220 yards per game last season and only threw 17 touchdowns in 13 games. Jets fans should hope and expect to see him eclipse 4,000 yards and have around 30 touchdowns, in my opinion, next season. Strong safety Jamal Adams enters his third year at age 23, coming off a 115 combined sack campaign in 2018. Now obviously the AFC East, they have a great team in the Patriots that have ran that division for the last 15 years or so, but there are three teams with second year QBs in Josh Rosen and Josh Allen and Sam Darnold, and if I had to pick between the Jets, Bills, and Dolphins as the breakout team for that division, I would easily pick the Jets. My second breakout team for 2019 will be the Arizona Cardinals coming off an absolutely terrible season which landed them the number one overall pick. A team that really had a very interesting offseason, made some weird trades and the whole Josh Rosen situation was something we've never seen before. But I like a lot of what the Cardinals have going on for them so let's start with their first overall pick Kyler Murray. Taking first overall this year, somebody I expect to be an absolute superstar in the NFL one day. 
makes beautiful touch passes. He's accurate and surprisingly a really good deep ball for somebody of his size. He also has the legs to be successful with a below average offensive line, which is something they might be able to expect in um, Arizona. Byron Murphy was taken in the second round and was given uh, the title as the best corner in the draft by some experts and scouts. Murphy was uh, honored first team all Pac-12 in his sophomore season in 2018, totaling 58 tackles, 4 interceptions, and 13 pass deflections. Slot receiver Andy Isabella in three seasons as a starter in Massachusetts from 2016 to 2018 totaled 329 receptions, had over 3,500 yards and 32 touchdowns. He's on the smaller side, but he's a special athlete who ran a 4.3140 with incredible agility and really solid hands that a QB can trust. He may very well be one of the greatest slot receivers in the game one day. Um, Zach Allen, the Boston College defensive end, Became well known after his junior season when he came away with 15 and a half tackles for a loss, six sacks, and an honorable mention for all ACC. He followed that up with leading his team with 15 tackles for loss while totaling, totaling 61 total tackles, six and a half sacks, and one interception, seven pass breakups, and two block kicks in 12 starts. Hakeem Butler, we all know the giant wide receiver, uh, is a big playmaker, but I don't expect him to be much of an impact in year one. The Cardinals have three wide receivers ahead of him in Larry Fitzgerald, Christian Kirk, and Andy Isabella. If one of them were to go down, maybe we'll see some valuable snaps from Hakeem Butler, but I'm not expecting him to be a consistent contributor until Larry Fitzgerald does retire. They brought in Robert Alford, the former Falcon as well. He had a PFF grade of 56.6 in 2018, which is average, but he gets to play opposite of Patrick Peterson, one of the best cornerbacks in football. In six seasons in Atlanta, he totaled 10 interceptions and over 300 tackles. Brooks Reed, the linebacker, has been around since 2011, and although he's never had a wow type of season statistically, PFF really loves this guy and should be a good depth option, option for their linebacking core. He's currently penciled in as a starter for the Cardinals in Week 1. The Cardinals also upgraded their tight ends by bringing in Charles Clay. Um, it's a crowded position with Ricky Seals-Jones and a former tight end Max Williams that was on the Ravens. Um, although he had a down year in 2018, between 2013 and 2017, Clay had at least 49 catches and 520 yards in each of those five seasons. They upgraded their offensive line by bringing in right tackle Marcus Gilbert, who was traded for a six-round pick from the Steelers. Gilbert will be 31 by next season and has always been very talented. The problem is he's only played 12 games in the last two seasons. In the mid-2010s, Gilbert was regarded as one of the best right tackles in football, and the Cardinals took a chance on somebody who could greatly improve their offensive line if he is healthy this season. Now, on to Terrell Suggs. Yes, it'll be weird not seeing him in a Ravens uniform for the first time in 16 seasons, but the man still feels he can play at a high level. He had seven sacks last season, which was his lowest since 2012, where he only played in eight games, but compared to what the Cardinals had last season, you'd have to consider him a better option than what they had. Suggs will be 37 next season. Jordan Hicks, the linebacker from the Eagles, was brought in. Um, nope, he's not the St. Louis Cardinals closer. It's a different Jordan Hicks. A very productive player in the last two seasons where he's played at least 12 games. He's averaged 88 and a half combined tackles. Last season had 91 combined tackles in only 12 games. If he played in all 16 games, that would have added up to 114 tackles. Hicks has a load of talent and is still only 26 years old and should be fine as long as he can stay on the field. DJ Swearinger, after surprisingly being cut by Washington during the end of 2018, Swearinger joined the Cardinals and promises to keep his mouth shut in quotes and do what's best for the team this time around. He has loads of talent and is still only 27. In 2017, he had a very good season with 79 tackles and 4 interceptions. Now on to coach Cliff Kingsbury, who will be 39 years old this year, gets his first shot at being an NFL head coach after spending the last 6 seasons at Texas Tech. In those six seasons, Kingsbury has coached NFL stars like Baker Mayfield and Patrick Mahomes, as well as Jets backup quarterback and former Giants draft pick Davis Webb. His mellow and cool personality along with a smart offensive mind might bode well for to players in today's NFL, especially with a young offense like this. Vance Joseph, the former head coach for the Broncos the last two seasons, goes back to his role as defensive coordinator where he should be much more comfortable. In Joseph's initial season with the Broncos in 2017, Denver had the NFL's number 3 ranked defense and joined Minnesota as the only teams in the NFL that had seasons to rank top 5 in both run defense and pass 
defense. The Broncos ranked number 5 in run defense in 2017 after finishing the previous year ranked number 28 in that category. I might be a little ahead of myself on the Cardinals, it might be a year too early. They do play in a tough division that includes the Seahawks, the 49ers, and the Rams. I do expect the 49ers to bounce back, we'll get into that later. The Rams obviously coming off of a Super Bowl appearance, and the Seahawks coming off a playoff appearance. It'll be tough, but as a Cardinals fan, I would be optimistic this is a much more talented roster and a much better coaching staff, you would think, than they had last year. Let's go to another team in the Cardinals division. This town would be the San Francisco 49ers, a team I expected a lot from last year. Unfortunately, their quarterback went down and they were stuck with CJ Beathard and Nick Mullins as their starting quarterbacks, but with a healthy Garoppolo, you would think this year, they are going to be in much, much better shape. So let's start with Jason Verrett, the cornerback. In 2015, Verrett was regarded as one of the best corners in the game, playing alongside Casey Hayward in San Diego at the time. Since then, he has blown out his Achilles in 2018 and has dealt with knee injuries in 2016 and 2017, which has limited him to only five games in those two seasons. A healthy Verrett playing alongside Richard Sherman in 2019 could be huge for the Niners secondary. On to the running back, Tevin Coleman. He had Kyle Shanahan as an offensive coordinator in Atlanta, um, where Coleman had success in a two-back system with Devonta Freeman next to him. Now gets to share a backfield with recently signed free agent Jarek McKinnon, who missed all of 2018 with a torn ACL. Coleman averaged 4.8 yards per carry in 2018 with another 32 receptions for 276 yards. So in that system where Coleman's going to do really well, I think, with Kyle Shanahan, he should thrive once again in San Francisco. Since coming into the league in 2015, Quan Alexander has been a tackling machine. In 2016, he ranked 4th in the NFL in solo tackles with 145, then followed that with 70 tackles in 12 games in 2017. He was limited to 6 games in 2018 after a torn ACL, but should be ready for the Niners by week 1. He's an athletic linebacker who should add a lot of skill to that position for the Niners. Now the big trade this offseason and one of the biggest surprises in 2018, totaling 13 sacks and 7 forced fumbles was D. Ford. Ford was acquired for a second round pick and then signed a huge extension with the Niners. Unless Ford's 2018 campaign was a fluke, the Niners should have a monster defensive line including DeForest Buckner, Nick Bosa, and the aforementioned D. Ford. Now on to this year's second overall pick, Nick Bosa. He was limited to three games last year in his junior year for Ohio State. But no one can deny that he is one of the most talented defensive ends in this class. In his sophomore season, Bosa posted 8.5 sacks and 16 tackles for a loss. The sky's the limit for Bosa, and he's one of those guys that when you watch him on tape, he's just, he really wows you and should be a very good defensive lineman for the Niners for hopefully the next decade. On to Debo Samuel. Samuel was picked early in the second round um, in this year's draft, and you can easily see why. First of all, the Niners needed help at that wide receiver position with the signing of Pierre Garçon looking like a complete dud. They have Marquise Goodwin and an unproven yet talented Dante Pettis. In his final season in South Carolina, Samuel had over 800 receiving yards and 11 touchdowns. He also was huge on making plays on kickoffs, scoring four career touchdowns on kickoff returns. Now for me, there's a few reasons I really love this Niners team this year. First of all, that defensive line I mentioned that has DeForest Buckner who had double digit sacks last year, D Ford who had double digit sacks last year, and Nick Bosa who's going to be a rookie but should easily have double digit sacks at some point in his career. So that defensive line looks amazing. I'm a big fan of Jimmy Garoppolo. Some people are not. They think he's just a fraud for some reason, but I really do believe Jimmy Garoppolo is going to be a really good quarterback in this league. Has an excellent release. He's very accurate, can work the middle of the field better than almost anybody. And I love their coach, Kyle Shanahan. It seems like everywhere he goes, the offense flourishes. You really can't blame him last year because of the talent he was given, especially at the quarterback position. But when this man is given players, he is amazing. You saw what he did with Atlanta in 2015. They had one of the best offenses, averaged, averaged points in the 30s or something like that. So he is a great play caller, and I do believe the Niners are going to have a pretty special year in 2019. Hopefully, they win 9 or 10 games and make the playoffs. The final and most optimistic team for me in 2019 
is definitely the Green Bay Packers. I've loved what they've done this offseason. Let's start with safety Adrian Amos. So Amos was signed in free agency for four years, $36 million, and had a great PFF grade of 82.7 in 2018. Last season, Amos totaled 73 combined tackles, two interceptions, one sack, and nine pass deflections. And he should be an upgrade over former safety in Green Bay, HaHa Clinton Dix, who was traded from Green Bay last season. They also signed Zadarius Smith, the 27-year-old outside linebacker who had a career year in 2018 with eight and a half sacks and 45 combined tackles. He was signed for four years, $66 million, and is looking to take the role of Clay Matthews, who departed for the LA Rams. Preston Smith played every game in his career with the Washington Redskins and was also signed for a pretty big contract, four years, $52 million. Preston is a productive edge rusher who had 12 and a half sacks the last two seasons combined. And he's looking to replace former Packer outside linebacker Nick Perry, who was released this offseason as well. Rashawn Gary was selected in the first round by the Green Bay Packers after three years in Michigan. He never reached 10 sacks in those three seasons. He projects well in the NFL, though, at 6'5", 285 pounds. Um, that offers optimism for NFL teams to make him into a productive pro. New defensive coordinator Mike Pettin will have a young, talented player on his hands to work with, so hopefully we see the best out of Rashawn Gary in his career in Green Bay. On to Dornell Savage, who was a first-round pick in this year as well. Will have to compete most likely for a starting safety job opposite of Adrian Amos. At Maryland, Savage had eight interceptions, 170 tackles, and two touchdowns in three seasons as a starter. Savage should be an awesome tackler in the NFL, but has some concerns with his coverage skills. On to Elton Jenkins, a second round pick this year of the Packers. Um, will have the ability to compete for the center job as well. Uh, he's an efficient prospect with size, power, and length at center. Billy Turner, the former Broncos offensive lineman, signed with Green Bay this offseason and expected to be the starting right guard. Turner moves well for a big guy and he's eager to show in Matt LaFleur's outside zone run scheme that requires its linemen to move laterally in swift but powerful fashion. Turner had a PFF grade of 62.8 which is deemed as average by their standards. Now on to Matt LaFleur. So LaFleur was given the offensive coordinator job in one year for Tennessee until being given the head coaching job this offseason by the Green Bay Packers. Some quotes about LaFleur from the Packers GM Brian Gutenkunst. Matt is smart, organized, and has a great vision for the path forward for our team. His values and personality fit the culture of our organization. He has a tremendous ability to build relationships on multiple levels, which is, very, which is a very important aspect in leading a football team. There was bad blood between Aaron Rodgers and Mike McCarthy, especially based on some of the quotes after him being fired towards the end of the 2018 season. In my opinion, McCarthy is one of the most overrated coaches of this past decade. His simple playbook and lack of adjustments gave the Packers offense no edge. He also refused to use Aaron Jones, the running back, in a featured role who might be the NFL's best kept secret. Although he struggles in pass protection, which is fixable, Jones has been one of the most efficient running backs since entering the league two seasons ago. As long as LaFleur sees what a lot of analysts see in Jones, um, he should have a rise in usage. Green Bay plays in a division with unproven teams, so anything can happen in the NFC North. I don't want to upset Bears fans, but two years ago, the Bears were not one of the best teams in football. They had one good year. The Lions seem like they're always rebuilding, and who knows what the Vikings are going to be with Kirk Cousins. I think if any of these teams are going to make the playoffs, I like the Packers as having the best chances of doing so. That will do it for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. This is actually one of the first times I wrote a script while doing a commentary. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it was more organized and I hope there was less nonsense and stuff like that. So if you guys enjoyed this kind of uh, layout and this kind of style, let me know in the comments. Also know in the comments um, what teams you think are going to break out this year. Is there a team I'm forgetting? I'm sure some Giants fans will say, hey, you forgot the Giants. Well, you guys said that last year. Look what happened. Not to be rude, but it is what it is. Um, so these are my four teams. I want to see what you guys say as well. Um, we'll talk there. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you guys next time.